I spent the past week designing an open source 3D printed gas mask. This year has been an all out assault on our respiratory systems. First it's COVID, now it's tear gas and pepper spray. The maker community stepped up and has been 3D printing face shields to keep our nurses and doctors safe. And now I think it's time that we step up and make things to protect our brothers and sisters out in the streets. No one's voice should be silenced because they lack the necessary protective equipment. So I designed an open source gas mask that can be made using any 3D printer and a few materials from any hardware store. I had an electronics video I was gonna post last weekend, but watching everything that's been unfolding across the US, it just didn't feel right to post it. So I set it aside and I've been working on this. Tear gas and pepper spray are being used to silence peaceful protesters. Not only that, they make people cough uncontrollably, which dramatically increases the risk of spreading COVID. In addition, they're extremely dangerous for asthmatics, not just people protesting, but bystanders and people who just live in the neighborhoods that tear gas is being used in. I think we're gonna see a lot more tear gas used this year. And I wanna make sure that everyone who's exposed to it has the ability to protect themselves. And just like we haven't been able to rely on commercial supply chains for face shields, I don't think we should be relying on being able to buy gas masks you know, over the counter or through the mail. And while there are some existing DIY designs, they tend to use really specialty items like full face snorkel masks, which are being used in open source ventilator designs and thus are in high demand. So I've designed a gas mask that can be 3D printed and only relies on other materials that can be found at any hardware store. I think it's important to point out, we don't need to equip everyone in a crowd with gas masks. We just need to equip enough people such that there can be small dedicated teams to step in and neutralize tear gas canisters as they're fired using the techniques pioneered by the protesters in Hong Kong. All right, so let's talk about the design a little bit. I wanted to make something that didn't look super military and scary, hence the pink color. Uh, of course, it's gonna be whatever color the person that prints it uh, is gonna use, but I didn't wanna use the traditional black. Gas masks are usually made out of rubber. So one of the downsides of 3D printing is that it's gonna be relatively rigid. Uh, and I tried to account for that. So I started with a 3D scan of my head. I needed a model to work on. So I used an iPhone app called Scandi Pro. And uh, the, <laughs> the immediate problem that I had is that I have tons of hair and I was getting a model with tons of hair. And really I just wanted a shape of the, the skin and head uh, and, and obviously the face to get the, you know, the fit on the face as good as possible. Uh, so what would have been perfect is like a, uh, uh, a nylon stocking to pull over my head, you know, bank robber style, but uh, I, I didn't have one of those. So uh, I ended up using saran wrap, which was far more terrifying. <sighs> okay, I can breathe. Um, but it worked relatively well. With some cleanup, I got a, a pretty decent model out of it. So I think the biggest challenge is getting a good seal on the face, um, both around the outer edges. And then uh, most of the designs that I looked at for, for commercial gas masks had a separate uh, enclosed part around the nose and mouth. So I, I replicated that as well. And it, my guess is that that's so that there's a smaller breathing area, um, but your eyes are still covered, but there's a separate breathing area that has a separate uh, seal. So you sort of have two seals. You have the outer seal and then the inner seal. Uh, for the seals themselves, I decided to use um, that sticky backed foam, uh, like weather stripping, uh, which you can find at just about any hardware store. But because that seal is so crucial, it, it's really important to get the, the exact design of the flange that that foam fits onto exactly right. Uh, and I, I spent a whole bunch of time, uh, probably spent the majority of the time getting that design of those, just that flat part that would press up against your face exactly right. At least for my face, it's obviously need, gonna need to be tweaked for other faces. So obviously the inside layer here is that weather stripping foam. And then if we hide that, you can see the actual 3D printed part. This needs a little bit of cleanup here, but you get the general idea. Um, this would then all be 3D printed. For the face shield, uh, I envision using like a clear two liter bottle, but I'm worried that's gonna be a little bit thin. So maybe the alternative is, you know, clear acrylic or, or plexiglass uh, that's heated over a, a form with a heat gun and, and sort of slumped into shape. Um, this is actually cut out of a cylinder, so it's, it's only bent in one direction. It's not bent in multiple directions, so it doesn't need to be like cast or poured. I, I thought that was really important. Perhaps most important is what is the filter material? So the other DIY 
gas mask designs I've seen use activated charcoal, which is actually what's used in the commercial designs as well. Uh, so they make a sandwich of uh, like cotton batting or cotton pads and then act crushed activated charcoal and then some more cotton batting. Activated charcoal is relatively easy to get. It's used in aquarium filters. Uh, so you can get it at pet stores. Uh, I would imagine you probably can get it at hardware stores, but I don't know immediately what they sell it for. Uh, and if you don't have access to it at all, it's relatively easy to make. Um, if you saw the last video, it's pretty easy to make charcoal and you can activate it, which is really just oxygenating it using some relatively easy to get over the counter chemicals. You obviously need straps to hold it on your face. Um, I'm envisioning either a rubber or like a, an elastic strap. There's five hooks for straps around the outside of the mask. Uh, and then something in back to sort of tie the, the five straps together. I, I didn't design that part, um, but it would be relatively easy. You, you can imagine some sort of thing that has five loops for the, the straps to go through. So the canister where the charcoal goes has a bunch of holes in the bottom. You put cotton batting in that next, and then your charcoal and then cotton batting on top, and then it just screws into uh, the, the mask itself. I wanna make it clear, this is just a V1, V0.1 even. My hope is that I can enlist some of you in helping with this and helping refine this. Uh, I think this is particularly relevant, not just in the US, but all around the world right now. There are a number of things that need to still be done. And this design obviously needs to be refined. I don't currently have access to a 3D printer here on the Native American reservation where I'm staying. Uh, I'm working on getting one, um, but obviously it needs to be test printed. Um, and the design needs to be refined. Um, I ran it through uh, Simplify 3D and it was estimating like 45 hours on a, on a standard commercially available printer, um, which is a lot. Uh, that's a really long print. So um, I'm not an expert. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an expert in 3D printing. I'm not an expert uh, uh, mechanical engineer. So uh, I'm hoping that, that other people have some ideas on uh, both how to make the design better, but also how to decrease the printing time. We obviously need to, to print out, uh, print it out and test the fit on different faces, test out the, uh, the foam gasket and make sure that that um, provides a sufficient seal. Uh, and then we need to actually um, test out the filter material and make sure that activated charcoal works. I've seen people testing DIY gas mask designs with various like aerosol air fresheners and that sort of thing, where you spray a lot into a, a can or into a room and, uh, and see if it filters those. If it filters those and you know it'll filter other aerosols like tear gas. These is even this video where they tested a very low tech homemade gas mask design uh, using pepper spray, uh, like an aerosol pepper spray that they bought off the internet. <coughs> oh! Oh, man. If you'd like to try printing one of these or you'd like to get involved in refining the design, click on the link down in the description for more info. I wanna talk a bit about Black Lives Matter, the groundswell movement to reform the police and racism at large. Um, I'm white. This is uncomfortable and difficult to talk about. I'm terrified about saying the wrong thing and I know my thoughts aren't always totally consistent. First off, I just need to say this, which is that black lives matter. I resisted rallying behind this message when it first came to light in the past couple years. It was because I didn't really understand what it meant and I didn't understand why it was so important. I think that many people think by saying black lives matter, it somehow implies that other lives don't matter or that they matter less. And it's exactly the opposite. By saying black lives matter, we are affirming that all lives matter, including black lives. For a very long time, black lives have been treated like they don't matter by our police, by our government, by our leaders. And so by saying black lives matter, we're saying we care about black people. I used to be very involved in a hackerspace in San Francisco and a number of people in the hackerspace said that we should never call the police under any circumstance uh, because they were afraid that if the police showed up, they'd be violent and that they would hurt someone. And I really struggled with that. Um, I have always thought of the police as largely benevolent and peaceful. And I don't know, I had this notion that if they came in, they would help diffuse the situation. And there were some scary situations in the hackerspace because of where it was and, and the nature of it. Um, we often had 
um, people who were homeless or people who had um, mental health issues or people who had um, you know, substance abuse issues uh, in the space. And often that was fine and sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes things got really out of hand and could get pretty scary. It took me a long time to realize that when people were saying, we're afraid that someone's gonna get hurt if we call the police, we're afraid that they're gonna show up with shotguns, which is something that happened, um, that it wasn't me that needed to be afraid because my experience with police, when I say that I'm afraid of the police, what I'm afraid of is I'm afraid of getting caught speeding and getting a ticket. Um, when I get pulled over for speeding, I don't have to worry about getting shot or beaten or tased or pepper sprayed. That's just not, it's not something that I've ever experienced. It's not something that a white person I know has ever experienced. And it's taken me a while and not until recently that I've begun to understand that that's something that almost every black person is afraid of and is a very real fear and threat. And so I really realized that my experience with police is not everybody's experience. And now as we watch the protests grow and build across all 50 states, we can see exactly how violent police have been, not just to black people, but to anybody who stands up for them. And, and yet I still struggle. I want there to be someone that I can call when a situation gets out of control and when it's more than I can handle and the people around me can handle. And that there's, you know, when there's a, a danger of, of someone being violent. Uh, and I was raised to believe that the police were that person. And now as I watch these protests unfold and I watch them be so violent to so many people who are peaceful and are just speaking their mind, I begin to realize and understand that we've tasked police with too many things, too many things that they're not trained to do, they don't have the mindset for, and that police departments don't have the culture for. And when I think back to the hackerspace in San Francisco, I think how much we wanted someone else we could call that was trained in mental health issues, that was trained in homeless issues, that was trained in substance abuse issues, that could come in and help diffuse a potentially volatile situation in a way that we knew would be nonviolent and that would get the people that needed help the resources that they needed. I, I don't believe this is a movement to abolish the police entirely. I believe it's a movement to take a bunch off their plate that they're not trained to deal with, that they don't have the resources to deal with, and instead give those to professionals who are. You might be asking, why am I speaking up about this now when I don't typically talk about political issues in other countries that I'm in? And <laughs> this is something that I have thought a lot about in the past few years of making strange parts. In case you haven't been able to guess, I have to be really careful about what I say in videos about other countries. I've realized that the biggest impact I can have is to show you what other people's lives are actually like. Um, people that may have grown up in completely different countries from you, completely different cultures under completely different governments. And through that, my hope is, is by watching my videos, you realize that we aren't actually that different after all. Um, there's so much hatred and xenophobia and racism in the world. My hope is that you come away from watching my videos with a little bit more nuance, that maybe I start to make you question some of the stereotypes that you have about other people. And maybe you realize they aren't actually that different from you after all. And if I spoke up about some of these more controversial political topics, I don't know that I could really say anything that you haven't already heard from someone else, but I would only get a chance to say it maybe once or twice before I wasn't welcome anymore. And so I'm gonna keep making videos in an attempt to bring us closer together. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. Stay safe. I'll see you again soon.